Hi everyone, it's Jerry. This is video 6 from the Beginner to Chess Master playlist, which is a progressive series of videos. And we're going to have a look at the 4-move checkmate. We're going to see how we can win at chess in just 4 moves, but not just that. We're going to see how we can defend against the 4-move checkmate in a convenient way. And we'll also learn about a couple other things. Things that will help us to put us in uh, a correct frame of mind uh, with the game. So let me first start out, let me go ahead and show you how you could try to win in just four moves. If you're playing on the white side and you'd like to uh, use this four move checkmate, what you would do is target f7. This is the weakest square in the black position since only the black king is there to defend it. And so what you're going to do is have your queen and light square bishop come out and converge on that square. So the way to begin is by moving your e-pawn up like so. This is freeing the way for both bishop and queen. After your opponent plays a move like e5, a very common reply, we bring our queen out, hitting f7, even throwing a punch at this e5 pawn. You can see knight here, or even pawn here, both of those actually defend e5. And we now bring our bishop out, we have two pieces on this square, and if black is not careful, making a move like so. Something that might be quite tempting, since it's developing a piece and attacking the queen, well, black has just fallen for the four move checkmate. Queen takes f7, and that's it, game over. Uh, this has a name, this four-move sequence. It's known as uh, the Scholar's Mate. And I could tell you from first-hand experience, I've been involved in the game, I've been playing the game long enough to know that this has a great, great interest. Uh, I see players over and over again trying this, and... Uh, I imagine many of them who try this and are successful have a false sense of feeling like they're grand champion of the game. This is not accurate. If uh, you have players out there who are trying this form of checkmate and are successful, they're not grand champion of the game. They're grand champion of defeating an opponent who does not recognize a one-move threat. Um, I, too, tried this same thing. <laughs> Let me say that much. When I first learned the game, I tried this four-move checkmate over and over and over again. And I was never successful. Let me be more specific. I learned, the, I learned this game from my father. He taught me the rules. And what did I do? I tried to beat my father in these four moves, and I was never successful. Uh, in fact, I'd try it from a different angle. I wouldn't come out here and try to get into that F7 square. I'd play here and then put my bishop here, and okay, if a move like this happens, that's another way you could be winning. Um, but it was never happening. He would always see the one-move threat develop, and what am I going to do now? This might have been the early stage of me uh, starting to think ahead. I recognized, that, ah, this knight's in the way. If he's not there, I could checkmate, so... I tried stuff like this. I'm ready to kick the knight away. He runs away, and then boom game over. Well, his timing is just way off. The knight comes here, hits the queen, reminds me that if I'm not careful defending c2, there goes my rook. It's just never happening. I was never successful when I tried the four move checkmate, but I still tried it over and over and over again, so I could only imagine the appeal it will have for a player who does try the four move checkmate and is successful. This four move checkmate is a form of hope chess. Hope chess is when you make a threatening move towards your opponent, even though you know it's bad, and simply hope that they won't respond well. From our previous videos, we should know that moving the queen out early is a bad choice. We should be getting our minor pieces out. We should be getting uh, castled. We should be developing efficiently. Bringing the queen out early is not a wise choice. We'll see how we could be defending against this properly. It's important to put yourself in a correct frame of mind. We should be doing what we feel is best in a chess game. Bringing the queen out early is not best, okay? Do not play hope chess is my main point. And it's important to um, be asking ourselves the question, what's the threat? This is the very basic, uh, the very start of attack and defense in chess. Our opponent generates some threat to, or excuse me, makes a move. The first question you should be asking yourself is, what's the threat? And once you've correctly identified the threat, the next thing you should be looking to do is determine 
how can I be defending against the threat? How can I be replying to a threat in a convenient way? So for example, in this position here, how can you reply to this attack against F7 in a convenient way? Well, it's the opening stage of the game. What would you normally do if there wasn't a maintenance one threat you would be developing? Well, if you can defend and develop, well, that's convenient. This is a perfect way to be defending this particular mate threat. In the initial uh, variation I showed with the queen coming out here, this is fine, bringing the knight out, developing. And after bishop here, well, this is not fine. What would be better? What would be a way you can be defending against the four move checkmate in this case? Here's one way to do it. Pawn to g6. Notice we're looking for some convenient way to defend against f7. Queen here. This defends against f7, but uh, I'm not so sure that's convenient, right? This bishop would really like to come out, and you're kind of stepping on one another's toes. You know, the queen being here in the way of the bishop, not really such a great idea. What about queen here? Well, yeah, that defends against f7, but it's getting in the way of the knight. We're looking for a convenient way, and I don't really see here or here as being so convenient. Knight here? Well, that defends, but we're looking to develop efficiently. Is bringing the knight out to the edge of the board a convenient way? No. Um, sometimes meeting a threat or a, a punch with a counter punch is a good idea. We could do that in this position. g6 is a perfect way to defend against that threat. And if the queen comes here, white insists on attacking f7 along this file now, what can we do? We can develop and defend. Notice we wouldn't want to do something like this. This is not developing. This is inconveniencing our own development. Knight f6 is a perfect way to do it. And if white is super excited about still pinpointing f7, only this time with the bishop, in this case it would not be coming with, um, well, it wouldn't be ending with checkmate, but white is threatening to take a pawn with check, well, we can in fact ignore this now and take advantage of the queen's decision to be coming out very early. We can improve our knight's position, enter the center with an attack against the queen, also remind white that they have to watch out for their c2 pawn, and if bishop takes pawn, we move our king up. The queen now has to move to a square and still defend the bishop. Queen here is the only way to do it, and we once again hit the queen. She has to now leave the defense of the bishop, and when she does, there goes the bishop, and black is the winning side, being up a minor piece, and white only has a pawn to show for it. One other quick variation would run as follows. If at this point after knight d4, if the queen moves, we would develop by moving our pawn, because this is freeing the way for a new piece to come out. And if pawn takes here, we bring our bishop out. The queen is hit. And when she moves, well, this is going to be serious, serious trouble. White is in check, and when the king moves, there goes the rook. Okay, the main point here is not to play hope chess, not to be doing things, not to be threatening your opponent, even though you know it's bad, and simply hope that they won't respond well. Bringing the queen out early is not a good decision, and we need to be asking our, of ourselves uh, the most important question in chess, which is what what's the threat? And we should be looking at all times for a convenient way to be replying to our opponent's threats. In the early stage of the game, it will be to try and develop and defend, or maybe even uh, develop and throw some type of counter punch towards, towards our opponent. Okay, uh, let me show you just a few other quick ways you could be defending against the four-move checkmate. Here's a super simple way to do that. If your opponent starts off with this and you know that they're very excited about trying to beat you in four moves, e6. There goes that form of checkmate. Uh, when the bishop comes here, d5, that's a, a nice way to slam the door in the bishop's face. Okay, If this bishop is not seeing f7 directly, you could kiss the form of checkmate goodbye. Same story goes for starting out like this. c6, bishop here. Where are you going, bishop? You're not seeing f7 directly. You're not checkmating me in four moves. Okay, So those are just some simple ways if you anticipate a player like this trying to deliver checkmate in four moves, it's just not going to happen. The main thing is to stay into a, a correct frame of mind here, not play hope chess. Make sure you're asking of yourself the most important question in chess, which is what's the threat? Correctly identify the threat and try your best to uh, reply to it in a convenient way. Okay, uh, so that's all for this video. As always, I hope you got something out of it, and I will catch you in video seven. 
Take care. Bye.